<clears throat> if you are like me, then you are not just fascinated by the 3D technology that most new movies today are released in, but also curious about how they actually work. How do a bunch of images moving on a flat screen make their way into our eyes via 3D magical glasses and then force our brains to convert them into three-dimensional information? But guess what? Your brain has always been doing that. Always since your birth. 3D movies or not, your eyes have always seen 2D shapes. If you're not familiar with this, I need you to pause me right now, click here to go to the previous episode where I explain why your eyes always see 2D and feed it to our brain which then converts it into 3D information. Alright, welcome back. So how does your brain do that? Well there are a bunch of clues which your brain uses to figure it out. For example, when you look at this picture, you know that this girl is actually in front and those dudes behind because of the relative size difference. Because of the way nature works, any object close to your eyes makes a bigger angle, producing a bigger image at your retina, which is basically a flat screen, compared to an object farther away. But this only works when we know the actual sizes of the objects. We know that she is of more or less the same size as those dudes back there, yet she appears bigger. Hence we conclude she must be closer. But what if we had two objects, one closer and small, another bigger and far, such that they made the same angle, creating the same image size in your retina, and you had never seen them up close personally ever before. So you had no clue about how big they actually were. Do you think your brain could figure it out which one is closer? The answer is no. You don't believe me? Look at the sun and the moon. It's an amazing coincidence. I think that both of them produce the same angle at your eyes. So just by looking at the sun and the moon, I definitely cannot figure out which one is closer. Even in this picture, it's hard to figure out how high she has jumped because there is no shadow. So another important clue for your brain is the shadow and the lighting effects. The moment I put a shadow here, immediately your brain says, aha, this is how high she jumped. But I could change the shadow and now suddenly it appears as if she jumped much higher. There are also other clues that your brain gets, like for example the blurring effect. Close one of your eyes and focus on your finger and the background gets blurred. Focus on the background and the finger gets blurred. This gives your brain a clue that these things are at different distances. However, these were all kitty techniques that your brain was using to make an educated guess of which things are closer and which are farther. But now comes the real deal. When it comes to truly perceiving the depth, your brain heavily relies on the fact that you have two eyes. That is right, most of our 3D vision comes due to the fact that we have two eyes. If you don't believe me, again, I can prove it to you. Close one of your eyes and ask someone to throw you a ball and try catching it with one hand. Go on and you will see suddenly it becomes incredibly difficult. Why? Can't your brains use all the visual clues that we just discussed, like the ball becoming bigger as it gets closer? Sure it can, but it's just too freaking fast. But with both eyes open, it's a cinch. So how does the second eye make the world look so much better, so much three-dimensional? The answer is, Parallax. I won't tell you what parallax is. I will show it to you. Move a couple of feet away from your screen. Close your left eye and stretch your fingers in front like this. And align it with the thick white line you will see on the screen. To be clear, make sure the white line and the two fingers are perfectly aligned. 
but keep them a little below each other so that you can still see all the three like this. But remember, your left eye has to be closed. Okay, here is the white line. Do it. Do it now and hold it. Now without moving even an inch, close your right eye and open the left one. If you did it right, you would now see that the fingers are no longer aligned. Keep switching between the eyes to see the magic. You should see something like this. The finger very close to you apparently moves a lot compared to the finger farther away and the line barely shifts. This shift is called the parallax. Why does it happen? Because we have two eyes which are not at the same position, obviously. Basically, you're looking at things from two different viewpoints, the right and the left. The line and the two fingers were aligned from your right eye's point of view, but not from the left eye's point of view. Your brain uses this difference in the images formed in the two eyes to understand depth. The way it works is, you take any image as a reference. Here in this example, let's say the white line. Then consider this finger. This finger is shifted towards the right from the left eye's point of view. Thus your brain understands that this finger is closer. Now consider the second finger. This produces even a bigger shift in the left eye, meaning it is even closer. But there is no reason to consider the white line as the reference. You could even consider this finger in between as a reference. Then you see if the white line appears to be shifted leftwards from the left eye's point of view. Thus, the white line must be farther away. So anyways you want to think about it, the simple rule that your brain is following is for your left eye, more the right shift, closer the image, more the left shift, farther the image. You've got to admit that is pretty cool. And to think that your brain has always been doing this since your birth, even now as you're watching this, it's just awesome. So how do you make a 2D picture appear 3D? Simple. You need to make two pictures, one for the left eye and one for the right. The objects must be appropriately shifted depending upon what depth you want to convey. But how do you do this? For example, how do you make sure that your left eye only sees the picture meant for it and not the one meant for the right eye? One method is using Polaroid filters which you can learn about in detail here. So what we can do is, we could make this left picture say horizontally polarized shown with horizontal arrow marks and the right one vertically polarized. Then make a pair of glasses using Polaroid filters in which the left side contains horizontal pass axis and the right side the vertical pass axis. Once you wear it, the left filter will only allow the left image, horizontally polarized one, and similarly the right side filter, the right image. Once this information is fed to your brain, it will be fooled into thinking that this shift happened because the objects are at different distances. Or in other words, your brain now sees 3D. But you know what? This particular technique where you use horizontal and vertical polarization has a serious drawback. Can you figure out what that is? Today's polarization technology used by most theaters are a little bit more sophisticated to overcome this drawback. So let me know in the comment section if you can figure out what the drawback is. Anywho, like promised, I can now make you see this picture 3D right here, right now. How? By squinting your eyes. What I want you to do is squint your eyes. When you do this, you will start seeing four images. Squint until the two middle images merge together to form one. It will all be blurred in the beginning, 
But if you give it time and try focusing on this middle image, slowly your eyes will adapt and you will be able to see 3D. You can also use your hands to block out the left and right unwanted images by keeping them close to your eyes like this. So I want you to pause this right now and try doing it. Okay, now you will see animation. Ready? Go. Isn't this wonderful? I have another picture for you. I click this from my balcony. So 3D movies are done exactly the same way. There are two separate movies shot using two cameras side by side, one for each eye. Then they are appropriately polarized and two projectors simultaneously project the two movies. When you take off your glasses, you can actually see both these movies with both the eyes and you can see some shift and it looks blurred. Also, when you're watching with the glasses on, try closing one of your eyes and 3D just disappears. So finally you know how 3D television works. But wait, even though your brains are being fooled into thinking it's 3D, it's still not giving you complete 3D information. You could still make out that this is not real 3D. You know how? Just try moving around. Because when you move in a 3D world, you see what is called as motion parallax. This is so common, I am pretty sure you have noticed this. When you move, things which are closer to you appear to be moving faster compared to the things which are farther away. It is the same reason why the sun or the moon which are so far away always appear to be following you. So do these 3D movies provide you motion parallax? Nope, they don't. So if you could sway, you would see that the images at the back don't move slower compared to the images in the front. They move at the same rate. That is not real 3D. You could just go back and try the same on that 3D picture. So is there anything 2D which gives you complete 3D information, not only binocular parallax, but also motion parallax? Turns out, yes. All that in the next episode. So stay tuned.